Welcome back. You're watching The Nation at 9 today, a special broadcast. Jai Lalita, the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, is on life support today. Throughout the day, most of the day, Apollo Hospitals Chennai has been coming out with the latest and the freshest health bulletins there, confirming uh, from their part at least that a team of specialist doctors is still tending to the Chief Minister, who is at this moment in a very critical juncture. She's on life support, and Apollo Hospitals, of course, has decried all reports, especially in the Tamil media and Tanti TV that ran that story first of her demise. They say these are false stories and uh, a team of doctors, specialists are attending to her 24-7, which includes a team sent by the central government from Ames, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, who is also at, their, uh, at the service as far as Jalalita's treatment is concerned. Uh, we, of course, have been telling you what there is uh, massive apprehensions uh, that have been over overcome really in, the, in, the, in Chennai, especially in terms of law and order. Those visuals, of course, will describe themselves to you right now. There were minor incidents of violence breaking out outside Apollo Hospital. Earlier today, we saw my colleagues Madhav, Lokupriya, Priyamvada, and Sagai Raj have all been giving us minute-to-minute, hour-to-hour reports and updates of what's happening outside Chennai, uh, Apollo Hospital Chennai, also AIDMK headquarters, where there are flags that half-mast, although uh, we cannot confirm that why they are there, but they are there. Apollo Hospital says that uh, Chief Minister is still fighting for her life. All medical attention uh, has uh, been given to her now. But to discuss what's unfolding in Chennai, of course, we also have to look at the party. The party has never really seen a leader of the stature of Jalalitha. Much before her was MGR, and after that it became a personality-oriented party. The cult of personality that is so heavy in Indian politics, perhaps even more in, in Tamil Nadu politics, evident today from those visuals and what is happening in Chennai right now. Supporters, carders, fans of Jalalitha out there in the streets. There are at least 2,000 cops that are posted outside the Apollo Hospital Chennai. Uh, we, of course, uh, filed a story uh, about uh, what happened in the course of the day, but we also have uh, right now live with us my colleagues on the ground in Chennai, and we'll continue to monitor the situation from Delhi. Uh, Madhudas Gopalakrishnan joins us, as well as Priyamada and Sagai Raj. Madhav, if you can hear me right now, the latest report from Apollo Hospital says that these media reports running in the local media are false. She's still fighting. Doctors still tending to her. Also, simultaneously, there is big bandobast happening. Uh, a change, perhaps, is envisaged. The official confirmation we'll wait for. But a lot happening in Chennai today. I've known of travelers who are stuck because there seems to be some chaos and pandemonium on the streets. Uncertainty right now. Jayalalitha's influence and following in Tamil Nadu was massive, but it was not just limited to the boundaries of the state. Often termed as a queen without the crown, Jaya influenced policies and decisions in Delhi with equal elan. From aligning with the Congress to joining hands with the BJP, she did not hesitate to rub national parties the wrong way. In fact, Jaya helped Vajpayee initially only to withdraw support that led to the downfall of the BJP government at the center. She followed it up with an alliance with the Congress party. In 2014 general elections, Jaya's AIADMK won 37 out of 39 Lok Sabha seats and became the third largest party in Lok Sabha. The fact that the deputy speaker is a member of the AIADMK speaks volumes of Jaya's influence on national politics. So, as Jaya recovers, it will not be wrong to say that whatever the situation, Jaya has always made Tamil Nadu count in New Delhi. Your report, News X. All right, uh, there you go. That's the latest update as far as Chennai is concerned. Let me also tell you that there has been uh, a motion already. Uh, o Paneer Selvam, we believe, according to sources, and this has been confirmed by our sources on the ground, has been elected uh, to head the party in the interim. And I'll just tell you exactly how they worded it in the absence of the ailing chief minister uh, in the interim, O Paneer Silvam will head uh, the party and the government on the floor of the house. They worded it very, very carefully there as well. It seems that O Paneer Silvam is trying to take charge. In fact, will be taking charge in the interim till her he health gets better. And I'll also tell you what uh, uh, various doctors have said today. And Dr. Richard Beale is one of those specialists uh, from uh, London who's been consulted. He, she sa he says... And I, and I quote him uh, now, the situation is extremely grave, but can confirm everything possible is being done 
to give her the best chance of surviving. That's uh, Dr. Richard Beale. She also he also says she's being cared for by a highly expert multidisciplinary team and is now on extra corporal life support. That that of course is the statement of uh, fact as of uh, Dr. Richard Beale. Apollo Hospital confirms it. Uh, there were of course indications that perhaps uh, some sort of rumor had gone on in Chennai right now. Let's also uh, go across to Kalyani Shankar, senior journalist, joining us from Delhi right now. She's been tracking Jalalita's uh, life, her political career very closely. And uh, Jalalita Kalyani Shankar has been uh, one of the tallest leaders, in, certainly in Tamil Nadu, and a big national presence post the late 90s as well. The outpouring of concern, the outpouring of love and admiration and adoration for her is really no surprise to anyone. Uh, also, the fact that it, there seems to be an orderly uh, sort of transition as far as Tamil Nadu government is concerned, it does indicate that Jalalita, because she was feeling sick for a very long time, she was in the hospital, there was some sort of succession plan in place already. And that's exactly what we're seeing unfolding in Chennai right now. Well, I agree with you to a certain extent because, you see, it doesn't suit anybody, neither the ADMK nor the opposition party like the DMK or the Congress or even the BJP to upset the apple cart. So they would like this present arrangement with Panni Selvam as the chief minister to continue. And at least for some time, they will see how it goes. And if the party is to split, anything is to happen later, then they will look at it uh, at a much later time. As of now, you know, the parties like DMK and Congress, they do not want the president's rule. If there is any disorder, nor does the ADMK. If there is any disorder, then, you know, uh, there will be imposition of president's rule, which means BJP ruling Chennai in, 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 in a background. And I, I know, I know so that diehard supporters like of Jaya Lalita will say it's too early to, to be even speculate uh, because we've been speaking to many of those Jaya supporters and they still believe and hope that she will recover and spring back really. If you speak to them, they will tell you it's too early to speculate. But in spite of that, let's talk logically right now. The fact that uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, in the case of any eventuality, let me frame it that way, uh, in the case of any eventuality, uh, Paneer Silvam does become, there is a void, it, it is a big gateway for national parties to capitalize on that. Heartless as that, that might sound to Jaya supporters right now, uh, uh, Kalyani Shankar. Uh, you, you see, if, if Paneer Silvam becomes the chief minister, he would be either the puppet of either Sashikala, if they are together, or the puppet of BJP. Because BJP can also rule through the governor, through the pan, through Paneer Selvam, uh, Chennai. Otherwise, you know, they didn't have any foothold in uh, Tamil Nadu. And this is one opportunity which they had been looking for. And that is why you see all the uh, central ministers rushing to Chennai. And uh, also uh, even uh, everybody else in BJP is keeping a watch on what is happening. So do the other political parties, I would say. The Congress is no less, uh, uh, you know, the Congress is also looking to how to get the space which could be vacated by the, uh, uh, the post Jailalitha period. So this, this is a very fluid situation. I wouldn't say that anything is going to be immediately done. So I would again reiterate that for the time being it suits all the political parties. Right, absolutely. And also the fact... And then take on from that. And also the fact that to, to con the, the continuity factor, oh, Pani Selvam or OPS as he's called has taken over thrice before every time there has been uh, a slight problem with her health uh, in, in the past as well. He seems to be the consensus candidate in all these uh, emergency situations as well. We've seen that in the past as well. Meanwhile, Khushbu joins us as well, spokesperson of the Congress Party. Khushbu Sundar, thank you for being on the program. Of course, I know it's a very critical time for millions across the country who adore and admire and support Madam Jaila Lita, as they call her. And she, of course, is still the chief minister, who, according to Apollo Hospitals, is still fighting like a true champion. And there is no other word, really, uh, that we were going to believe at this point right now. There has been so much outpouring, really. It has become a matter of concern for authorities who, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kushbu, have handled it rather well. There have been some incidents of violence, but the police, I'm being told, are extremely, very, very restrained and even given back the projectiles thrown at them uh, in a very polite gesture. So I believe the police has got it under control. They sense the enormity of the moment, and I think they've come through. I would really appreciate the cops this time because the way they have been functioning since last evening, in fact, since the news of uh, Amma Jaya Jalita being, uh, you know, affected with cardiac arrest and uh, her, uh, it's very life-threatening for her. She's been very critical 
So the, the cops have been doing a great job in controlling the crowd and taking care. In fact, there was a rumor this evening, late this evening, about uh, about her demise. And despite that, the, the few stray incidents of um, the violence were also controlled by the cops. So I would really uh, hand it out to the cops this time in Tamil Nadu. All right, fair enough. That, of course, takes care of the law and order. We've seen uh, schools shutting early and parents, of course, concerned about their children because they fear some sort of uncertainty on the roads. I believe it's been handled by far. Um, uh, so far, uh, by and large, the cops, of course, have been on the job absolutely. We're also welcome to the program right now. Siddharth Vardarajan, he's the founding editor of The Wire, senior journalist. Thank you for joining us, Siddharth. Let me come straight to you right now. Uh, Apollo Hospital has put out a series of tweets, and of course, we will go by officially what the hospital is telling us. But there are signs, of course, that uh, perhaps Jalalita supporters should uh, prepare for any eventuality. Not giving too much away right now, of course, I have my compulsions. Jalalita's career has been, uh, uh, well, uh, nothing short of uh, uh, mercurial, some would say. Uh, right now, if that eventuality that I spoke about happens, and it's completely hypothetical at this point, there will be a void, not just in Tamil Nadu politics, but also within the ADM. And it remains to be seen if OPS Balakrishnan and S. Sasikala have that kind of cohesion to lead the party forward. Or will that just be a transitory group or a transition group uh, as uh, we are seeing right now? Siddharth? Well, I think if you look at the politics <coughs> within the ADMK, uh, notwithstanding the factionalism that is bound to exist and erupt or get accentuated, I think the overriding concern of the party and its MLAs will be to keep the, uh, the ship of government afloat because uh, elections were fought barely a year, year before. They have four, four years more to go. And I don't think uh, any ADMK MLA would will want to relish the board. thought of going into, uh, of, of, of creating a factional situation where the government collapses and you have elections. Because without uh, their face, without uh, Jayalalitha, the prospect of ADMK in an election called soon would not be, you know, would be, would be somewhat doubtful. So I think that the compulsions of remaining in power will probably assist uh, all the ADMK players to uh, sink their differences at least for the next uh, two years. Of course, the closer you get to the uh, end of the five-year term of the government, uh, that's when you th you, uh, things may sharpen. Uh, so I think a lot depends on on uh, the interim arrangements. If they stick to OPS, uh, chances are that you know the status quo can carry on. If right, on the other hand, uh, so that as we as we Sashi speak right now, we're being joined the, uh, by more guests. Minister, I think that may accentuate. That may accentuate. We've been joined by more guests as well. Let me just introduce them very quickly before we move on. Right now, Nalini Singh joins me in the studio. She's a senior journalist, also with us, Dhania Rajendran, editor in chief of the News Minute. It's a website. She joins us from Chennai. We saw you earlier, Dhania. Uh, speaking to my colleagues, and I'll come to you in a bit. Also with us, Ashok Malik, senior journalist, joining us from Delhi as well. Welcome all to The Nation at 9. Let me come to you, Nalini, right now. This is, of course, the enormity of the, of the moment I mentioned a while ago, of course. I believe, uh, and it looks like by the visuals right now, that officials at least understand, ADMK uh, officials, police officials, the law and order machinery understands there is something big happening right now. Although I will go by the official Apollo uh, hospital version right now. I'm, of course, I have my compulsions, but any eventuality, I believe a lot of people are already prepared for that. ADMK headquarters had flags at half mast today and not jumping the gun right now. I believe that a succession plan <coughs> is unfolding right now, and this was an eventuality many saw coming. <coughs> well, uh, certainly, I, I would say that uh, uh, whoever jumped the gun today, uh, if it was a uh, Tamil TV channel, yeah, yes. and extremely unprofessional, if I may say so. But, you know, it's interesting. It would have made almost no difference to Jailalita. It would make no difference if she, if she was to, to know what's going on. Mm. Because, because she didn't depend on the media at all for the image that she has created. We, we, let's not forget that this is an extremely successful film actress, uh, film actor, who has, uh, you know, the, who has transformed herself into Amma, into a sari wearing cloak uh, bearing uh, uh, amma and i think that was a you know a stroke of genius and i think she had it in her heart she actually uh, not only that she she wanted to do this to dravidian politics but she actually took this path because somewhere there was a call or she felt it and it was extremely successful here also and in both professions where she said 
She claimed that she, she was a very reluctant entrant into either of these two extremely high profile professions. And also feeds so into the I would say cult of personality so in Tamil Nadu politics as well. Maybe she was in know, fact suited yeah, for it. It's also because I think a lot, and the Tamil you know, journalists who are specialists in Tamil politics should correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of the, the prominent Tamil politicians after independence were from film. Yeah. Anna Dorai actually wrote wonderful scripts. The Karnanidhi, the, the, you know, what can one Great say about him? Writer, Great yeah. script Kalana. writer. And of course, uh, uh, then uh, the, there's Jailalita. And if you look at South, if you go, I mean, you go a little bit north to NTR in Andhra Pradesh, yeah. also. So the fact that these were heroes and heroines who were supernatural in what they could do Con conflated upon politics. Absolutely. And I, I think that therefore she's also considered supernatural. And she did a few things which were beyond uh, the horizon of a, a lesser uh, politician. She, she beat anti-incumbency, something that, that hadn't been seen before in Tamil Nadu. One should say, say although that the vote share fell this time a little bit, but she managed. Yes, but she, managed, mean, she managed. She managed to. And that's get no back mean feat that. uh, for, for Jalalita or anyone in that. Uh, and the struggle. Yes. And the struggle of. I, I, I want to go well. across to Danya Rajendra right now. Raj, 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 Rajendran right now. Danya, thank you for joining us. First of all, there was, of course, uh, so much said in the afternoon uh, while you were with us there as well. And it's, it does seem like it's a two pronged approach to handling party and government at the same time, uh, uh, with Sasikala perhaps operating the party part uh, and Paneer Selvam being the official face of the government on the floor of the House. Balakrishna is going to be important as well in the case of any eventuality. Let me add that rider right now. Uh, but all things went on pretty quickly throughout the day today. We saw tinted cars moving in and out, ambulances, a lot of national leaders showing their presence as well. Uh, uh, could you update us on the latest really as far as the meeting of the MLA is concerned and whether any indications from either the hospital uh, or the ADMK party of perhaps uh, b breaking some sort of news uh, late in the night today is concerned. Danya? Well, as far as the meeting of the AIDMK uh, MLAs are concerned, what we had been hearing initially before the meeting started was that uh, the decision would uh, in, uh, be open in Selvam as the leader of the house, which of course would be the man who would become the chief minister if needed. Uh, another minister called Edafadi Palani Swami, he may become the deputy chief minister. And uh, there was, of course, the question of who would become the general secretary of the party. But there is some news coming in from that meeting. We are yet to confirm it that there are some differences emerging uh, between these leaders in the meeting. We are not yet sure that uh, the differences are between uh, who and who is just trying to get this uh, information. The meeting itself was uh, supposed to be held at 6 o'clock, but it was postponed. It just started uh, uh, some time back. But we are hearing that all is not going well in that meeting. Maybe they will iron it out in no time. But as of now, that the information we're getting outside the Apollo Hospital, of course, it's just been one long wait. Uh, many carders, hundreds of carders are still here. In fact, not many people right outside Apollo Hospital. There are just a few hundreds. But in the roads uh, adjacent to the hospital, there are a lot of carders and they had been getting impatient through the day. There was, of course, that one uh, spurt of uh, uh, commotion in the yeah. evening when some Tamil channels announced uh, that J.J. Alta was no more. We saw people wailing, people getting violent. Uh, but things came into control very soon. So people are still waiting here, hoping that Apollo Hospital would give some information. Well, as far as Apollo is concerned right inside, now, Danya, they, they of course have indicated that the, the precious Apollo tweet Hospital from doctors. the CEO there, I believe, uh, the chief operating officer, I beg, I beg your pardon, and she says very clearly in this press release that I would want uh, the viewers to listen in right now. Uh, and it's a very, very clear clarification. The Honorable Chief Minister continues to be on life support at the Apollo Hospital. Specialists and specialists from AIMS are continuing monitoring. The Honorable Chief Minister very closely then goes on to say some TV channels are wrongly reporting that Chief Minister is no more. This is totally baseless and false. They're advised to rectify. This music second goes on again and again. This is signed by Subhaya Sri Vishwanathan, who is the Chief Operating Officer there. So you can see uh, where we are at right now as far as official sources are concerned. Well, I think Ashok Malik is also with us and I think Mukund Padmanabhan will be joining us right now, editor of the Hindu from Jenna as well. Uh, very quickly then to you, Ashok Malik, uh, as far as Tamil Nadu politics is concerned, we touched upon that topic a little bit there as well. She also had a substantial uh, uh, national footprint. Uh, she burst onto the scene, of course, with that uh, uh, now legendary Tea Party. She's had run-ins before as well. And some would describe her and have described her perhaps uh, as uh, in a flattering manner, perhaps like the uh, as the prime minister that India never really had, the most qualified politician to never hold office there as well. Now this is uh, uh, this is an interesting side to Jalantha as well. So 
I don't know about whether she was the best prime minister in general. Someone described her as so. I'm not back yet. Unless uh, the fact is, in Tamil Nadu, either the DMK or the AIDMK tends to win uh, and win big. Uh, so uh, there have been occasions when one of these parties has won 35 seats out of 39, uh, or maybe 36 out of 40, if we include Pondicherry. Uh, Jayalalitha commanded a lot of seats in between 91 and 96 when uh, she was backing and working with the Narasimha Rao government. Uh, she was in a position of authority with the first Vajpayee government in 98, which she brought down. Uh, and then, uh, uh, so these two uh, occasions gave her a lot of uh, uh, power and a, and a big say with the government at the centre. Uh, to some degree, uh, she regained that power only recently when uh, uh, Mr. Modi came to office because uh, before this, the UPA was in power and it was backed by the, the DMK, which were her rivals. Uh, but she didn't quite have the authority with Mr. Modi's government, which she perhaps expected in 2014 because the BJP won a majority on its own. Both, both of them uh, claimed she they had a relationship, but especially the Prime Minister, in the sense. Sorry? Yeah, they had a relationship. Yes. They, they, they knew each other well. They respected each other. But uh, the fact that she wasn't as powerful... Uh, this time uh, as Chief Minister, as she may have been in, on previous occasions. I think uh, Jayalalitha uh, and her politics exemplifies uh, the, what can be called the Tamil Nadu model, which has been used in other states as well, which is deliver high economic growth, Yes. Uh, even though there are charges of corruption against both parties in Tamil Nadu, deliver high economic growth, uh, deliver some jobs, but uh, 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 complement that with some degree of, whether you call it welfareism or populism, uh, I would the, say a the social part welfare scheme was the cornerstone, uh, and, and the that's where fundamentally she differed from the BJP on how to govern and how to rule. And uh, the not so good part would be distributing uh, mixers and grinders. Oh, fair fair enough. Fair enough. I, I just want to line out so uh, really some of the initiatives taken by, uh, by, by uh, Jalalitha, of course. I want to go back to Siddharth in a bit, but I think Mukund has joined us. He hasn't been part of the debate yet. Apologize, Mukund, for coming to you late, but there were some technical issues, I believe. Uh, Mukund, uh, this is a very uh, important uh, development, really, the important news story that is developing and breaking right now as we speak. Uh, there is still an official denial from the Apollo hospitals. Uh, they say that uh, the Chief Minister is still fighting for her life. She's a champion and many of her supporters, of course, still praying. I spoke to one right now just before the show started, saying that there's no point in speculating. We believe she will rise like the phoenix. So the cult of personality, of course, is very evident here. And, and, and Jalalitha, of course, in the past has shown, especially the last uh, assembly victory here, she uh, unleashed really a, a slew of social welfare schemes. And some would, of course, if, if this was being done in America, they would call her a socialist, which is a bad word uh, there as well. Is Amma canteen, is Amma water, is Amma laptops, there Amma baby kits, Amma cement, Amma salt, Amma seeds, Amma grinders and fans, like someone mentioned, Amma pharmacies, mobiles, call centers. I can go on. There are Amma cinemas as well. So she's left her footprint so large. Uh, as of now, that the eventuality that I, I'm hesitant in discussing right now on television could have an impact, so to say, for the next, I don't know, a week as far as the Tamil psyche is concerned. Yes, I mean, <clears throat> both on the Tamil psyche and I think uh, we're, I think Tamil Nadu is on the cusp of something. I mean, you know, we have... Uh, we're talking about Jayalitha a lot, but we have another leader who's also in hospital, who's 92. We have Jayalitha who's in hospital not very well. Um, it is not clear even if uh, she comes out of this very, very successfully, and we hope she does, uh, how able she will be able to get back to running the state. So this is the state uh, that seems to be uh, going into a change that uh, none of us can predict with absolute accuracy about how it will go and what exact form it will shape, but, you know, what, what it will like take. Then. There's absolutely no doubt that uh, this is a, a, a state on the cusp of change. This is a state on the cusp of change, is what I meant. No, I, I completely understand uh, what you're saying. Karnanavi also has not been keeping well. He's already confined to a wheelchair. Ed, of course, catches up with all of us. So let me come back to Nalini Singh and Siddharth Vardarajan for a bit here. We have both of them on the screen right now. You mentioned, of course, how she did her politics as well and how uh, this could uh, leave a void as far as... Uh, and Dhanya told us just right now, uh, in Chennai, there is already some disagreement uh, between party uh, MLAs. There is already some disagreement who run the party, who gets what. Pani Silvam has been very safe for the, uh, the ADMK in the past as well. He is, of course, the finance minister. He, he runs it like a bureaucrat as well. Does he lack the political charisma, really, and the political, some, some, some would say, wherewithal to hold that party together? And, and you know, there are big well, shoes to fill here. There are very big shoes to fill. Correct. 
I would say the first question is, will the party, uh, will the party stay or will it crumble? Mm -hmm. I also hesitate to say these yeah. words today. Yeah. But uh, will the party be as strong as it is or even slightly weaker, but will it stay? Uh, that's one. The other one is you are to ask me about Panir Selvan. So what I can see, uh, uh, he's not a mass leader. He's not a leader who will win elections. He runs I, it like a technocrat. Yeah, he will not be able to win elections. So they've got, therefore, the names you've mentioned, of course, Shashikala Natarajan, and you've mentioned the other Selvan. Uh, yeah, but I would say the Sheila, um, uh, Sheila Balakrishnan. Mm. Um, now these are, I think that uh, some of them are tried and tested, and they're extremely intelligent people. Mm. Now, one doesn't know really their auditory, one doesn't know many things about them because they were under uh, this uh, banyan tree of, uh, of uh, Jailalita. So one has to see. But the question is, will, she, uh, will, will the party actually hold together? I also want to say, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of um, innuendo that maybe uh, they will move close to BJP, w which is a possibility. Always there is a possibility of a party moving close to it every party, but remember that Jailalita's troubles are actually, or they uh, actually originate in Subramaniam Swami's petitions, and he's a BJP uh, member of parliament. So all these things will come into play if Jailalita, for some reason, is not, uh, you know, holding the reins of this party, then maybe they will uh, overlook it. I'm not uh, very sure, you know, but I there are these things to remember. I, I want to go across to uh, Siddharth on this. How much do you agree with Nalini here, Siddharth? And also, I think, I believe I, I said earlier in the, in the afternoon when I was covering it then, that uh, no matter how heartless it might sound to diehard supporters of Jalila right now, that we're dissect dissecting what might happen tomorrow in a completely speculative manner since Apollo says Jalila is still fighting for her life. No matter how, f how heartless they think this is, this is important because in the case of any eventuality, Tamil Nadu is one of India's most important states. And it holds great significance as far as national politics, Rajya Sabha seats, and the number of Lok Sabha MPs that ADMK has. I believe it's the third in the Lok Sabha right now. Uh, after TMC and Congress, uh, it's 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 very important to talk about that. And, and ADMK holding up as one particular party and not fragmenting into smaller sections is a very very uh, likely possibility that one should talk about. Would you agree with Nalini's uh, analysis here? Well, as I said earlier, I think the uh, there will be great pressure on the party leadership, such as it is, uh, in any post Jalalita scenario. Uh, to hold together and not allow factionalism to topple the government. Uh, because were they to do that, elections will be a certainty. Uh, elections which ordinarily would be held in another four years. Uh, many MLAs have invested money in getting elected and would not relish the thought of uh, going into a fresh election. Uh, that to one without uh, Jaya Lalitha to lead them. So I think that the smart money would be on you know, ADMK finding some way to hold together. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would imagine that uh, you have various claimants uh, for the chief ministerial post. Uh, I wouldn't rule out the possibility of Jalalita having left final instructions of some sort or the other uh, uh, were such an eventuality to arise. But I think the big question for the national politics is really, you know, the fact, I, I think uh, Malik made the point, I mean, the salience of Tamil Nadu uh, at the national level today is uh, uh, not what it used to be for the simple reason that the uh, Modi government has uh, a majority of its own and a comfortable one with all kinds it of allies. Become important by the time 2019 happens. Uh, so to that extent, uh, the ADMK numbers are, are kind of marginal. But things may, yeah, in, in 2019 things may change. And you know, here uh, what what Mukund was saying that the you know both the major uh, parties and their combines are on the cusp of change. Uh, slight advantage for the DMK group because um, there is a, a succession plan put into place. It may be a contested succession plan because. Uh, Stalin and uh, Arigiri, uh, you know, this is Stalin is the is the anointed heir, uh, and this may not, uh, you know, his writ may not uh, run in any post And Stalin story, was but tried ADMK, in the past. He was, uh, he did. Once you uh, go over say, the, the, the hump of just running government, Jaya all bets are off. Too much for him in the last elections as well. I, I get your point completely, and I agree with you, Siddharth. Danya Rajendra, I want to come back to you very quickly right now, uh, uh, given the fact that uh, I think you're back with us. I think she can hear me right now, yes. Uh, Danya, the fact that uh, uh, Jai Lalitha uh, left such a large imprint, really, on not just Tamil Nadu politics, but also ADMK politics there as well. Are we seeing already moves by possible internal or external uh, sources to perhaps somehow try 
uh, and deviate because as Siddharth said, perhaps there is a succession plan in place, instructions, uh, we've been hearing about these news stories for the past two uh, months while she was hospitalized and it's a known uh, fact that she has been having problems with her health. Uh, uh, I believe uh, there were, she was in hospital, in ICU for more than two weeks. Uh, so all these things should factor in or will factor in. There's also Dhanya, and I want to speak to you about this uh, uh, apprehension really on how, react, uh, how the supporters of Amma might react. We've already seen some wailing chest beating and some sort of uh, a violent behavior. Uh, is there a concern that if and when some sort of news is broken about any eventuality, there could be a situation where uh, uh, temporarily there could be chaos in the streets of Ch Chennai or, or are these exaggerated sort of claims right now? Well, so the first part of, of your question, the succession plan, uh, obviously things are not going as per the AIDMK's plan. Like I said, the meeting which is supposed to be held at 6 o'clock, that got postponed to 9 o'clock and now we are hearing that the meeting has been postponed again and could perhaps happen even tomorrow. So that means already there is a, a disagreement between various leaders of the AIDMK. We've been hearing right from afternoon that uh, some of the leaders are not happy with Opani Selvam uh, being chosen once again as the man who will be able to, who will be leading the government. So uh, Fisher is already showing within the AIDMK uh, uh, the, if the meeting happens today we'll have to wait and see if Opanisalam does indeed get elected uh, as the legislature party leader. But as of now AIDMK seems like they're not able to keep their flock together. The second part of your question what happens uh, if an announcement uh, uh, is made? Well I think we got a glimpse of it at around 7 o'clock when that news broke uh, on various Tamil channels that Jay Jayalalitha is no more. There was immediate chaos. People were really angry. They started throwing stuff here. But they also calmed down in around 5 to 6 minutes. So I genuinely hope that that's what happens in case an announcement is made, if at all that happens, that people would of course be shocked, there will be disbelief, right. there will be fear because this is the only leader in their party they, uh, and there's so much of love and reverence for her. And Kushbu, we've seen a glimpse like Danya said right now, what could happen in the case of that eventuality. Do you think that, uh, that perhaps even if there is some sort of announcement to be made, perhaps it should, they should wait overnight? It's ultimately, I believe, uh, a decision that has to be made. Uh, she's on life support right now. The question is how long will the doctors deem fit for her to be on life support, whether they can take her off life support at all. I believe it's a medical decision from here on end uh, and nothing else. Well, uh, that's for Absolutely. Kushbu. We did get a glimpse of it. In fact, when the news came out, it was a false news. Uh, very surprising, yeah, very surprisingly, this news about her demise was not only on the other channels, it was also played on Jaya TV itself. It was a breaking news on Jaya TV and the AIDMK headquarters had uh, put up the flag at half, uh, half mast. So I think even they took up the, uh, you know, the news very seriously about it. So they were a little confused about it themselves. So in which way it says very clearly that even Jaya TV channel and the AIDMK headquarters are not really, really clear about how Amma is doing at the moment. There has been a press release. We saw a little of uh, kind of attention which had built up those five, six minutes in between till the uh, Apollo Hospital released another uh, press uh, statement saying that she's still alive and she's put on a life support system. But like you said, uh, you really need to wait. Uh, you know, there's so much of confusion with the people in Tamil Nadu. They don't know the actual reports. They do not know how to go about these meetings between the ministers and the MLS, the cabinet meeting which was to happen at 6 and then at 9 and then at 11 now and you don't know whether it's going to happen at 11 or not. So the, it's creating a lot of confusion among the people. It's even in schools, we do not know whether we should send the children to schools tomorrow or how do we go about half of the schools, private schools have declared a holiday, half of the private schools have not declared a holiday. There's no uh, clear statement from the government whether the schools should be shut or whether they should continue. So there's so much of confusion. I think. Um, you know, it, people, uh, we all think and we all hope and pray that uh, she should survive. We have always seen Madam Jay Jalita as a fighter who has been fighting different battles, you know, throughout her political career as well as as an actor. And she has always come out as a winner, as a champion. So we really hope and pray that she does that even this time. But then a little more clear information on her health or if there's an announcement to be made, how it has to be made, because we had 
um, our uh, Venka Naiduji coming and visiting her. We had the governor. Both of them did not speak to the press. Both of you them know, have not given I any want, I want Ashok Malik press. and Nalini so Singh to come in here as well. I just want to ask you really about the involvement. Uh, as far as the center, like I said, mo is monitoring the situation very carefully and, and they have to take in account really what's going to happen. Like I said, Tamil Nadu is a very important state right now and emotions are running high. As we saw from the visuals earlier, Amma, of, Amma of course, is not just a political leader in Tamil Nadu. To some, she's a god uh, and uh, a, a deity really. They, they, they worship uh, such political figures, especially in, in, in the southern part of the country, in, in uh, what is now Telangana, Andhra, and Tamil Nadu as well. Uh, we've seen this happen time and time again with NGR as well in the past, uh, who was a political mentor. Ashok Malik, let me just ask you right now, as far as these apprehensions are concerned, because uh, it would also make sense for the authorities that are in charge now, currently, in her Ill, uh, illness really, in her absence of running, uh, they would also need some time. Uh, to make sure that in the case of any eventuality, they are prepared to deal with the chaos that is sure to be seen on the streets of Chennai. And I think, and I believe really, the statements coming in from Apollo Hospital would also give us an indication really that ta that time uh, uh, is perhaps something that is better given to the authorities so that we can prepare for any eventuality. Let me just stop there and ask you that. I think... Uh, authorities both in Chennai and uh, in the Home Ministry and the Centre in Delhi have been preparing for this eventuality. Uh, of course, they've been hoping it doesn't arise, but they've been preparing for it for a few days now, uh, which explains why uh, the Home Minister has been in touch with uh, authorities there. Uh, paramilitary forces have been apprised. Uh, the police is... Uh, Bandobast has... Uh, we've already seen it happen. So Chennai is uh, one of India's bigger cities, a big business city. Obviously, there would be concerns about uh, the fallout of uh, any uh, uh, such a right, since by more than one uh, uh, national minister has gone down to Chennai in the past few weeks. Mr. Venkaiah and I do, uh, went, uh, Mr. Arun Jaitley went earlier, uh, Mr. Amit Shah went. Uh, they went in recognition of Jayalalitha's political stature. They also went in recognition of the fact that uh, a vacuum in Tamil Nadu, uh, and a vacuum had already formed while she was in hospital, uh, needed to be addressed in some manner or the other administratively by the center if the center could help. So th that that goes without saying, yes. All right, as, as, as it's been 75 days, Nalini Singh, and this time that Ashok spoke about right now, the government has taken a back seat. We are being told, of course, by our people on the ground as well, that yes, decisions were being taken because, uh, uh, but, uh, they, because one stop uh, shop for all approvals was the chief minister. Governance had taken a back seat. It's been 75 days, and uh, ultimately, for the good of the state and the country, even her constituents, even her supporters would have liked uh, for governance to go on. That is what Amma would have liked. And if you want to do right by her, uh, keep the wheels of governance working. Absolutely. I think that, uh, the, you know, what the people, are, the panelists are referring to, and I again hesitate to say this, mm. but about 30 years ago when uh, MGR wow. passed away, there were 119 deaths in uh, Tamil Nadu. Exactly. Now, we do hope, I mean, we do, we know that Tamil Nadu is different, that uh, the administration is different, things will happen from Delhi, etc. But still, that fear lurks. And the other thing is that as far as I can see, Jai Lalita uh, had, had, uh, uh, had transformed Dravidian politics in her own image. What had happened is that this was a uh, Brahmin who had come along, and she then, the, Dravin, uh, the Dravidian politics were all about the oppressed and the backward and the left behind. So he, in these, she identified one segment that was truly left behind, that was women. So today, when you see women wailing and, uh, you know, th these are heart-rending uh, scenes that you see over there, it is because they really thought of her as their amma. Absolutely. And it goes to the genius of this politician who, from the uh, image of the film star, I keep saying it, transformed from herself into amma and actually uh, fulfilled the emotional needs besides all the other needs of those who were left uh, behind. Okay. So the Amma, you know, if you go to uh, Tham, uh, Chennai, you see Amma canteen, so fantastic, so swach, if one was to take a borrow an idiom from right. the center. Right. This is really swach Bharat that you see over there. And it's, it's also efficient. Oh, most of her schemes seem to be working, and that's the report from the ground. Some of them, of course, might not have taken off, but given the social welfare background, really the mentality of those schemes, they really worked in a state I, I like Tamil Nadu. If Lundi. I may also yes. just add, and this is unconfirmed, but you look at the steely resolve of this person, of this leader. 
uh, as I say, it's unconfirmed that she, but she was ill, that she was extremely diabetic is known. Mm. And I believe that she had actually uh, had some, uh, some toes amputated yes. also, which this is, is why she couldn't. Yes, we've all heard about the stories as well. She we could not walk. Uh, yeah, she couldn't walk, but, uh, but these the are all unconfirmed uh, stories. But uh, yet she held this together and yes. she said, you call me a dictator, but I'm going to hold this party and 10 years ago it was 1.5 crores uh, that was the number and so if, if, if the orderly fashion that the, at least till now is there any indication of how the transition so-called transition is happening i think uh, perhaps that uh, plan really worked kalyani shankar i'll come back to you but i have to take a very short break right now when i come back after the break i'll go to kalyani shankar siddhat khushbu and uh, mukund as well very quickly danya rajendran will also join us for the remainder of the debate quick break now we'll come and we of course are talking about the unfolding scenario in chennai right now with our guests who joined us kalyani shankar is still with us. Uh, we, of course, will talk also in a bit about uh, how Jalarta really transformed herself, as Nalani keeps saying, from an actress with mass appeal to a politician that redefined how politics is done in Tamil Nadu, especially post the death of her mentor, MGR. It became one woman, one party. It transcended party lines as well. And she became a leader of the masses, the Amma to uh, the Amma supporter as well. We file a story. Take a look at this. We'll come back to Kalyani Shankar as well as Siddharth, Nalini and Mukund. This is what Tamil Nadu witnesses every time Jayalalitha steps out in public. Such is Amma's appeal among people that there is a frenzy all around. It was in the year 1982 that Jayalalitha joined the AIA DMK party, founded and then headed by the legendary MGR. Ever since, there has been no looking back. After MGR's death, Jayalalitha took control of the party and built a cadre base around her personality. These are uh, very uh, strong and very influential uh, political leaders with very strong followers, very strong following. So uh, there is a, uh, they, they are cult figures, uh, they, they are legends for uh, some common people. Uh, so these are matters of faith and these are matters of uh, heart. Today the AI DMK, which is the second largest opposition party in the Lok Sabha with 37 seats and 13 members in the Rajya Sabha, is being single-handedly run by JJ Lalita. As she recovers, there is a team of her closest confidants who may step up in the interim. Jay Lalita's association with MGR may have catapulted her into politics, but it is only her sheer hard work and charisma that has seen her become the most popular and equally fierce politician of her generation. For her supporters, Amma means everything. Bureau Report, MusX. All right, so we still continue to monitor the situation very closely, as do the doctors in Chennai. Mukund Padmanabhan is still with us. Mukund, the political ramifications, of course, will be clear in the next uh, couple of days. We, of course, again, I'll put a rider there. Like, to all the Jalalata supporters and cadres out there, we hope uh, that she does have a speedy recovery and she rises like the phoenix, like one of them said. But in the case of any eventuality, it's going to have wide-ranging ramifications, not only uh, on national politics, but more specifically, like you mentioned, this seems to be the enormity of the moment, really, is not lost on any Mukund. And the fact that perhaps even the DMK is watching this very closely uh, would give us an indication that something big is going to happen. In the case of that eventuality, would you believe a party like that was completely uh, centralized with one particular leader, like I said, transcended party lines as well? Uh, do you think that party has a shot, really? It's in their own interest to stay together, like we've established on the program right now. But politics, especially after a void is created, is never that easy. Do we have Mukund on the line? I, I believe he can't hear me right now, so some technological problems there. Kalyani Shankar is still with us. Kalyani, I started the program with you. I'm going to come back to you after a while here. But we, we did have an unfinished conversation, really, as you saw, the situation is you saw it unfolding right now, with Apollo sticking to what they're saying, that she's on life support, she's on ventilator, and it becomes a medical question of whether or not they want to take her off it right now. But ramifications, political and otherwise, as, as you see them,
local, the political ramifications are on two counts. One is the local, domestic, and then the second is the national. After all, as many of you have been talking about it, that ADMK is the second most important party in Lok Sabha. There are 37 seats, which is very important. They also have, I think, 12 or 18 seats in Rajya Sabha. So for the BJP, I think uh, uh, ADMK is very, very important. That is number one. And in the local uh, politics, I think, as I said earlier, I think they would like to manage to continue for some more time because uh, nobody wants to uh, give up power and nobody wants to go for election immediately. So that is the power is the only cementing factor which will keep them together. And uh, DMK also is not interested in going to election and they would also not like to upset the apple cart right now because they need two thirds of the ADMK to break the party. So they will also need time and they are just waiting for that. And at the national level, uh, Yes, go ahead, please. At the, at the national level, at the, at the national level, again, the two both national parties, Congress and the BJP, are looking to the space which is likely to be vacant in Tamil Nadu. You see, Congress also is going, Rahul Gandhi had gone to see Jai Lalita, and then BJP, of course, has been sending its senior ministers, and they've been, Prime Minister himself is talking to her, and they have good equations, all that. So both the parties are seeing that, you know, the, the Tamil Nadu has never had a national party <coughs> for, since 67. Since right. 67, so, so there is a gateway, an opportunity for all national that, parties, really, and the they wouldn't do it that way after the riding. sufficient mourning so, period is so, over. And that, of yeah. course, uh, you're bang on there. Uh, but right. stay with us. Danya, I want to go across to you because there is some new information coming in, and I want to familiarize our viewers with what exactly is unfolding in Chennai right now. We did report earlier, Danya, that there were flags at half-mast at the ADMK headquarters in Chennai. We have visuals to prove that as well. I'm now being told that the flags have been re-raised in the hope of a miraculous recovery. Could you elaborate? That's not exactly the case. In fact, uh, uh, when television channels started flashing that Jay Jayalita is no more, there was of course uh, 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 there were of course screenshots of JRT. We also uh, putting out that flash, which is perhaps why the party must have believed that it's true. Uh, and immediately the flag was put on half mast. In fact, when the commotion happened, I, I ran to the gate in Apollo and asked uh, Jayalita has the security guards. I asked them, is it true? Has the confirmation come? They said yes, it's come on television. So uh, that's really how it spread. Uh, the party also, uh, in complete disarray, uh, do not, they do not know what was happening. So they also believe what came on television. But later, Apollo Hospital came and confirmed that those rumors were not true and the Jailalta was still on life support. Uh, currently, of course, the meeting uh, is what the focus is really on here in Chennai. That meeting also, a lot of uh, issues are cropping up in that meeting. We do not know exactly who are the leaders who are problem with O. Pani Selvam as the next leader of the party or the government rather but we hear that there is definitely disagreement within the leaders and that's something the AI DMK would definitely not be wanting at this time that their second rung of leaders not agreeing with each other so it's starting pretty early then Siddharth is it uh, by the looks of it by the looks of the very day that such uh, grave news is broken and Sangeeta Reddy I believe used the word grave situation and critical situation in her last tweet if I'm not incorrect uh, at, at this moment already if there is so much disagreement that wouldn't uh, really uh, uh, all go well uh, for the for the ADMK for Tamil Nadu politics and of course governance in the state. You know, the, we are not privy to what uh, the argument within the ADMK people is all about. It could well be for how to choreograph the announcement. I, I don't know. I quite frankly, we're not privy. It's not worthwhile speculating. But I would I would say that at the end of the day. The attraction of remaining in power is, will overwhelm any, uh, any factional fight. Of course, uh, you, know, you, you can't put it past any aspirant to try for the top job. But uh, at the end of the day, I would say sm the smart money is on Pani Salvam just in terms of continuity, in terms of momentum. That's what you know, he was running the government uh, as the face, as it were, uh, during uh, Jalalita's illness. And that probably, probably will carry on. Uh, you know, so um, I don't think that. We need to worry too much about you know, the, the issue at hand really is, uh, is there really a, a realistic prospect for her recovery or uh, is the entire discussion about choreographing uh, an announcement that may eventually have to be made, uh, the law and order issue, these are all immediate concerns. But in the long run, I wonder whether beyond 2019, 
the ADMK can cohere or remain as a, uh, as a strong united party. All right. Because uh, the uh, you know fissures are apparent. Uh, there is no obvious leader, and um, there is no great ideology to bind them together either. All right. Uh, so I, I'm you know you, you will you will look at the BJP right now and uh, trying to, to make gains in the state. DMK, of course, Congress, various other players. Yes, there's two points that Adat made. One, of course, uh, 2019, uh, 2019 forced uh, ADMK stopping to be a relevant player really because of the loss of Jalalita. If there is that eventuality at all, will the right result? Also, the fact. That uh, the, the the lust for power, the the pull of power, will eventually overcome every every sort of uh, dissent uh, that they might be encountering right now. Um, or do you believe that this is this is not dissent right now? It's just how to choreograph that that sort of eventuality that might happen actually, in the public. Uh, Asfar, uh, you know, you are saying it doesn't augur well, <clears throat> and I think it augurs well because for the party that is for the no, party not, not for AIA DMK. Right. I'm saying it mm. augurs well okay, you disagree. because yeah. Mm. Because I think there was, that means that there are signs for the first time that there was a latent democracy. Mm. There was a little latent democratic spirit that they can, maybe these are factions and maybe they're going to be brutal and hostile with each other, but at least they're able to say it to each other across the table. Uh, you know, so there was that in, in my opinion. And I would say that it's a peculiar situation we come to in India time and again. India seems to like ascetic leaders mm. and uh, I don't want to name them they're obvious they're you know our state chief minister if you let me just say Naveen Patnaik mm -hmm. you have Nitish Kumar etc so almost reclusive as well yeah reclusive yeah. and uh, ascetic it's, it's uh, completely amazing mm. so what will happen is that if of these leaders if one of them is showing itself himself or herself to be extremely attached to what's called the material world and you know to getting on with uh, their uh, their um, uh, riches filled life riches by riches i mean even fame filled etc that's one that's one category the other category is of uh, the jalalita school she, nobody can match her mm. but you know if there is something who is interpreted dravidian politics in their own way as she did then uh, and is somewhat withdrawn from the uh, spoils and riches of power while being in power and while being a dictator that kind of complex scenario that's the one that uh, will probably succeed uh, maybe even in 2019 although it looks a little unlikely today all right we'll take a quick look at another story we filed when we come back if we have time i'll try and get closing comment from siddharth and dhania as well but take a look at this uh, first tamil nadu's most powerful woman jalalita gave some extremely powerful speeches in her prime. Here's a look at why she is truly the Iron Lady of Chennai. I just handed over a letter to the President communicating the decision of the AIADMK to withdraw its support to the government headed by Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee with immediate effect. We feel that this government is a threat to national security and this government is simply not interested in taking steps to protect the nation's sovereignty and security. This is the reason why we are withdrawing support. In most places of the state there was no drinking water to be had. The whole of Tamil Nadu had become one big garbage dump in the last five years. So one could go on and on in this fashion. The only thing that everyone did, everyone in power the last five years was to just amass money through any illegal means. The main reasons are all pervasive corruption from the top to the bottom, total lack of governance, nepotism, domination of one family, not just in all areas of government, but in every business, every trade, Everything was monopolized by one family. There was no freedom of expression, no freedom of the media either, no freedom of speech. People felt they were living in Hitler's Nazi Germany or in Mussolini's Italy 
what an idiom in Uganda. And people could not access basic amenities. There was no power to be had. In most places of the state, there was no drinking water to be had. The whole of Tamil Nadu had become one big garbage dump in the last five years. So one could go on and on in this fashion. The only thing that everyone did, everyone in power the last five years was to just amass money through any illegal means. There was a total lack of governance. So the people decided that they had had enough of all this and they had decided to throw out the DMK government. And the moment they got an opportunity, they did it in a silent revolution. Nidar Sanamana Wunmaya in the Neratil, Avargalakum Puriya Vaikarin, Anaivarakum Puriya Vaikarin, Anaitin the Anna Drava Munetra Karakatudan, Kutani Serna Daldan, Temuti Kavakita, Satam and the Urupanaka, Keraitarke, Adanaldan, Avargalaki, Yether Kachi Taleva, Andestum Keraitari, Pradana Yether Kachi and the Tagadium, Andestum Keraitari. Right now, at this moment, at 9.53 p.m. today on 5th of December, I can tell you the Jalalatha is still in critical condition in the Polo Hospital, Chennai. And doctors say there's an entire team of specialists monitoring her. We do hope that the Phoenix-like recovery and all our wishes and prayers and best wishes are with Jalalatha and her supporters. And we do hope she bounces back like she has in the past. For now, however, I'd like to thank uh, my panelists who joined us tonight in discussing what is unfolding in Chennai right now. It could be an enormous moment uh, in Tamil Nadu politics, of course. Uh, uh, Narani Singh, Kalyani Shankar, Siddharth Vardarajan, Ashok Malik, Dhania Rajendra, Mukun Padmanabhan and Khushbu joined us tonight in The Nation at 9. I'll have to take a very short break right now with the promise that on the other side, we'll keep tracking this story and many others. Thank you for joining in. I'm Atar Khan. Good night.